Hey there, welcome back to my channel. My name's Andrea, and I love the Pilates method of exercise. If you're new, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I couldn't do this without you. And today I have a request from a YouTube subscriber, Alberto Lanza. I hope that I'm saying that correctly. Thank you so much for your suggestion to work on progressions for the neck pull exercise on the mat. This one is no joke, and I feel like many people, myself included, lots of people need progressions to better their neck pull exercise, especially if you're in a mat class where you just have a yoga mat that's on the floor, you don't have a strap, you don't have handles. That's really the hardest place to figure out how to use your muscles in the neck pull exercise, especially if you're a little bit stiff and the roll up is already hard to do. And that was the case in my uh, mat classes when I first started doing Pilates. Uh, the roll up was really, really hard. And so by the time I got to the neck pull, it was, it was a bit of a challenge. And I would say that I continue to perfect both of those exercises. I can do them, but there's always, you know, better quality of doing them. And I'm just going to share a little bit of my tips for the neck pull progressions with you. And let's just take a look at what we're talking about. The neck pull is going to come after the single leg kick, double leg kick, thigh stretch, then the neck pull. And we'll talk a little bit about mining a lot of extra goodness and help for the neck pull out of the previous few exercises as well. So I'm going to use the strap. And just time for a tiny little rant. So I learned that the neck pull exercise, when you get to it in your reformer or, or sorry, in your mat order, it, it starts lying down. So you do everything you do, and then your transition into the neck pull is to efficiently get to this position to begin your exercise. And oftentimes I see people starting the neck pull like they're gonna do the neck pull and they start kind of like this. And Maybe it's taught that way for a certain reason, but I always learned that the exercise starts lying down. Uh, so that's, yeah, so that's sort of my little rant about the exercise starts lying down. It's basically the roll up, except it's a little harder because your legs and your arms are a little bit differently placed. Okay, meanwhile, back at the neck full. So the full exercise is you're rolling up, you're stretching three times, you're sitting up to a tall position, and then you're scooping in and lengthening yourself on the way down. And then repeat. <laughs> so often the rolling up, especially if the back is a little bit stiff or the legs like to help a little too much, that was my problem when I would roll up without a strap, my legs would fly up in the air because the things that were strong were just trying to figure out how to help me, but they weren't very helpful. So that's usually the hardest part is to roll up without either coming up in a big chunk or not coming up. And so that's the part we're going to look for a little bit of assistance for. But first, let's talk about the order of the universe. The order of your exercises is also going to help you to better your experience of the neck pull exercise because it's going to prepare your muscles to be ready to help you in the proper way. So the first preparation, and you know, as I talk about, you know, different things in the mat order that precedes the neck pull that can help you, the real answer is that everything that precedes the neck pull is going to help. <laughs> However, I'm just going to highlight a couple of the things that are uber helpful, shall we say. So the roll up. I used to determine how the neck pull was going to go based on how the roll-up was at the top of the workout. And the roll-up is really your first neck pull, except it's a little bit helpful because your legs are together and the arms come forward. And the arms are a lot of weight that is helping you to go forward a little bit because when the neck pull happens, the arms are weighted not in your favor. They're all tied up behind you and there are extra things for you to have to lift up. So you have your roll up. That's going well, let's say. So then you get to the point in the order where you're going to do the swan. You lie up to your stomach. You're going to do swan, single leg kick, double leg kick, the thigh stretch, and then you'll flip over to begin your neck pull. So all of those exercises that you're doing on your stomach, the swan, 
single leg kick, double leg kick, and the thigh stretch, they are cultivating all of the back of you, predominantly the buttocks, the back of the leg, and all the things that eventually are what's going to hold your leg down on the mat in ex essentially a hip extended position. So that this all works to extend the hip, so that this doesn't work to pick you up. And if you notice, we have our big flowing movement of the swan dive, which is strengthening all of the back. I'm just approximating. <laughs> and then we have some um, more pointed, uh, spot pointed fixed work, where we're, we're really one side at a time, strengthening the buttocks, the stomach, the inner thighs, the outer thighs, and uh, the buttocks. And then we have the double leg pull, which is again gonna strengthen all the seat in the back of the leg. And then our thigh stretch, now these muscles are actually helping us to go back and support the weight of our body as we do the thigh stretch. So the seat, the back of the leg, the whole back of the body is helping us to literally push ourselves up. So each one of those is making this work even harder so that then when we get to the neck pull, we're ready. So, I like to imagine that the back of the leg, that the heel gets to put a little pressure on the mat, and the back of the leg is really like grabbing onto the mat, so that that's going to hold you in place. That is my little image for that. And then you're going to lift your bottom and your waistline all the way up to where your hands are behind your head, and you're going to roll up and stretch three times. And then you're going to roll up to a tall position. And here's where I feel like the back of the leg is grabbing on so you can roll down. And despite that, all that preparation through the mat workout, this working, everything like that, there still may be some difficulty in rolling up. And I'm going to give you two suggestions. Uh, one is sort of using your arms to help you. And if you do it properly, it doesn't really make the exercise any easier because you're really trying to, you know, use your muscles to bend your back, essentially. And then the other one, we're going to use a tiny little spine corrector cushion, which I think I may have used uh, for a roll up as well. So first let's do the assist and then we'll use the cushion. So the assist, you're going to curl up wherever you feel like you get to a spot. Maybe it feels like you can't come up any further. You're going to pause and you're going to put your hands on the back of your thighs so that I'm using now the strap to help my low belly stay in so that my arms can lift my upper belly, upper body over my lower body. And then I'll put my hands behind my head again. So that you're kind of working through the sticky spot instead of just skipping over it or avoiding it. Or like heave hoeing yourself forward. <laughs> we don't like the, the throwing up, the rolling up with a big heave ho. Okay, so let's just do that one more time. So I'll curl up as much as I can. I'll place my hands and now I'm going to bend that spot that doesn't like to. We all have one. And then, if you feel out of control on the way down, you could also do it to help you on the way down. But sometimes it's the, and then you would replace your hands, sorry, sorry my hands were off from their own devices. Um, but often it's the way up that's the most problematic. But you also don't want to crash down on the mat, so if you do need the assist on the way down, that's a good place to do it so you can place yourself down with control. And I want to emphasize that really all these assists are doing is to help you control yourself in the exercise and not kind of whip yourself about. 
Because remember, it's not how to do the neck pull, it's the development of control of your, over your body. That is important for life. Um, okay, so now let's put this little assist here. And you'll see, it just gives me something to kind of pretend I'm pulling my center into. And you'll see, um, actually, let me do one without, and then I'll put that in and you can see the difference. Okay, so now let's put this under. And I just have it right behind the part of my stomach that I feel like doesn't like to work as much, but it's above where my hips are and my sacrum. You can see that I have a little more lift of the low back when I use this that I don't quite have when I don't use it. So I use it sometimes, and sometimes I do my mat just without. Um, so I hope that helps, and give those progressions a try, because sometimes if people are used to doing the neck pull and just sort of whipping themselves about, they won't want to pause and work through that spot, that sticky spot, but you need to sort of make them not blow by it so that, you know, that it'll get more facile and then they won't need the assist anymore. Uh, but sometimes people just want to rush through it and, you know, you know how that is. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Alberto, for your request. And I hope that answers your question. If you have further questions, do leave me a comment below. I'm happy to answer. And thank you so much for watching. It's been so fun to see your suggestions and your successes and your comments. It's been really fun to, to be in the comments in that conversation. And thank you again, and I will see you next time. Bye!